Before we can understand and receive the DBR, we have to understand that we have to go through the DBR, the death, the burial, and yes, the resurrection. The Lord said, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. Today, I want to touch just briefly on this. I'm not going to be long because he's not going to let me do this. So I was going to do something. Today's really the birthing of a new covenant for us. Today's when we celebrate this because the old covenant, which was made up in man, as we find in Scripture, and we will touch this in Romans, says that what that old covenant could not do, God did do through the Son, through Jesus Christ. To come to take all of those things, and I love this as he says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, he says he made him to be sin. Somebody say, to be sin. Who knew no sin. That we may be free. We may be the righteousness of God. I want to I wanna really hit this for us today. Because there's, there's something a little different, I think, about this. And, and I'm going to ask this question, and I'm going to try to ask it nicely, politely. How many of you struggle with the sin in your life? Well, somebody raise his hands. Nope, I'm good to go. Good to go. Good to go. Good to go. Well, praise Jesus. I still struggle. I still struggle with things trying to get myself to the point of understanding really what this looks like for me. If somebody asked you what the resurrection life looks like, what would you say to them? Could you say, just follow me and you would see Jesus? When somebody would ask you what it looked like to pick up your cross, what your cross looked like, what would you say? What does your cross look like? Because they're in so many different ways. So many different ways. Let's go with this really quick, so follow me. We're going to go to Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 6. This is the opening part. I know, God, I am going to go there. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them, dazzling in dazzling clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you. While he, he was still in Galilee. Somebody say, I'm not going to look in the living. I'm going to look in him. Now, here's why. I want you to go with me now to Revelation chapter 3. And I'm going to read you the amplified version. 3, 1 and 2. To the angel, the divine messenger of the church of Sardis, write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, a reputation, that you are alive. But in reality, you are dead. Wake up and strengthen and reaffirm that which remains of your faithful commitment to me, which is about to die. For I have not found any of your deeds completed in the sight of my God or the meeting his requirements. Here's what's, what I find in this passage. So many people want to tell you that things look living when God says they're dead. You go over this and you keep going over these things in your life that just keeps rolling around. And you, it's just like we embrace this and we want to keep this way of life. We like our thoughts. We don't want to grow. Well, God's given you a brain so that it would grow and it would come to the realization of who God is. Some people are trying to tell you that you're bound down, you can't move. But God says, I want to tell you those works that you've been doing, those works, they're dead. They're not producing life. Yes, it might make your flesh look good. And this is where I'm going with being dressed up. It might make you look really nice. But when you stand in front of me naked, you're going to be dead. Repent and come back to me, the first love. Take my yoke upon you of the Spirit and watch how the power of what my love and mercy can do. Have you ever tried to follow something that somebody tells you to do and it just seems like you're wrapped up in more bondage? 
Have you ever tried to get through something and it seems like somebody will tell you this is what you have to do to get over lying or this is what you have to do to get over porn or this is what you have to do to get over an addiction and what you end up doing is finding that it's even heavier on you? You ever been there? Well, what ends up happening is you're doing all these works and these works won't produce what God's looking for. God's looking for you to rest in him. Can I ask a question? Did God need your assistance to raise Jesus from the dead? Did God need your assistance to raise any of the other dead from the dead? So what makes you think he needs your assistance to raise you from the dead? So what makes you think that he needs your assistance to get you to walk in the fulfillment of your calling? What makes you think he needs you to be able to stand up and to walk in a holiness when it's only his spirit that's there anyway? All you have to do is walk through the death, burial, and the resurrection. See, some of us, we do this. We walk this cross. Jesus tells us this. He turns and he, he tries to tell us exactly what it was. So I want to ask that you go with me. There again to Matthew chapter 16. Verse 21. Let me go over here and do this. I got a feeling I want to be running here. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it. Lord, this shall never happen to you. He tried to rebuke the rebuker. Now, how many times has God tried to tell you to get up to do something and yet you stop and rebuke him? You stop and you say, no, God, I just can't. No, God, that's not how it works. I've got to do this when he says, just rest in me. Just understand I've got this, but you can't stop. You've got to get your hands in it. You've got to keep working. You've got to keep working. And before you know it, you've made more of a mess of your life and other things than anything else. It's part of what he says here. But he turned to Peter and he said, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block into me. For you are not setting your mind on God's, in God's interest, but man's. Now watch this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and, and, one more time, and, ooh, are you ready to follow Jesus? Are you ready to follow him in a way that you will never stop? Today I want to see you set free. Jesus said to pick up this cross. For some of us, cross might be maybe just being a parent. A child that we've got that's wayward, that's not listening, that breaks your heart. Maybe that's your cross. Maybe your cross is your job. You don't want to, you hate this job, you want to get out of it, you're tired of being beat down, you want to get into something else. It's like, God, why would you have me in a pit of hell where all these people are and all they do, they're heathens, all they do is cuss, rant, and rave. Maybe God has brought you there to bring life there. See, some of us don't like the cross in which we have. Some of us, honestly, our cross is our marriage. The cross in which we have, and we can't get away because it's the one that's sitting beside you. You, you can, your smile, it's okay if, if she sees it. You won't be beat up too bad, honestly. Maybe, just maybe, your cross is your ministry where you have to deal with the hard things. You have to be in front to know that some people, some people, you have to let go and they have to come to a breaking and others you got to hold on to. It's like if you go and you, you have a puppy and that puppy keeps following you everywhere you go. And I had a dog one time that did this up north when I was a youngster. Youngster. It was a toy cut, a teacup poodle. Anybody know what those are? Little, little ratty, little things, right? Buffy was its name. Yeah, my mom named it. It was her dog, really. I took off one day. I was running across the street. I was trying to go get drunk. I wanted out of the house. I was running to meet my friends. Well, this dog, which my mom loved, this dog followed me across the road. Boom, it got hit. 
I remember coming back home. That actually, my mom told me that next day. But I remember coming back home, and something was different. Didn't, but you know how you know something's different, but you just can't put your finger on it, right? Your 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 big finger, anyway. So I didn't hear the dog yapping, but it didn't register until the next day when my mom told me that Buffy ran out the road chasing me and got hit by a car. And that sort of sort of hurt, you know. Sort of broke my heart. I'm not one of these guys that look at a, a dog and go, "Hey, look how cute that doggy is." Nah, that's just that's not me. But I remember seeing this, and, and, and all the time, this dog, every time it would, would start to chase me, I would stop and say, go back home. And it would just look at me. It would walk a little bit further. So I said, go back home. It would go a little bit further, and it would just stop and look at me. And then you got to go, go back home. That dog would turn, and it would run back home because you had to get food with it, right? That's what happens in our life. When we're dealing with people, sometimes we have to do that. People have to go back so they don't get hurt, and then they get mad because we have to step up. But here's the thing. Your life has got to be wrapped up into that cross. Jesus said this. But that cross brings great victory, great freedom, great freedom. Some of you are wrapped up into this thing, this tomb. You're, you, you've, you did everything you could. You went ahead and you died. You died to all your fleshly stuff, and now you're buried. And what what happened with Jesus when he died and he was buried? Where did he go? Anybody know? Somebody say he went to hell. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, my Jesus never went to hell. Well, no need to debunk your theology, but he said he went into into hell to lead the captivity captive, to lead them out, to release them from prison. This is how we have victory over anything demonic in our life. Everything. So as he went and, and he went down, and I love how this tells us in Luke, it says that the, these Pharisees and the, the, the scribes, they all came up to the key or to the, the, the pilot and they said, hey, look, we remember that he had made a claim that on three days he would rise. Send your guards so that it would secure this tomb so that he can't get out. If he does, then they're going to say that, they, 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 that he resurrected it instead of them stealing it. So he says, you got the power. Go ahead and seal it as good as you can. So they did. And I need to say this. How many of you feel delivered? How many of you feel like God has set you free on something, but yet people bring you back to it? Come on. How many of you feel like you've got joy of the Lord and everything's going good, but you're just stuck, you can't get out? Anybody? Well, I got news. Jesus did not just come to take your sin on. He came to become that sin. He came to take the authority that the enemy had to be able to destroy it forever. See, if God's forgiveness is only good enough to forgive you halfway and not forever, then it's not forgiveness to begin with. It's not grace to be empowered. It's not mercy that is powerful. It is a man's way that's conditional. And I've got news. When we were resurrected with him, we're absolutely forgiven forever. Forever. You're free. You're free. Stop letting that thing try to hold you back. Who cares if that demon's raising up? Who cares if that old flesh is trying to tell you you're not going to be set free? That I'm never going to let you go. You've got to tell them you don't wear that coat no more. You've got the coat of righteousness on. You are free. You don't need a man to lay hand upon you. You don't need somebody to come up and spit and put oil all over you. You don't. The resurrected king lives in you. Yeah. I know I'm a little loud, but this is where I get excited. This is where I'm from. This is it. This is where I came from. I came from a a place where you couldn't even squeak, man. If you farted, you were going to hell. Man, you wore clothes, you were messed up. We went and visited this church up north, this old church I came up with. I'm just being honest with you. I want to see you set free today. You're in a tomb. You know how I know you're in a tomb? Because I don't see light in you. You're still looking back at that hurt. You're still looking back at that rejection. You're still looking. You think you're good with God and you're wrapped up in the bondage. You don't even know it. You're walking around in the tomb. You're walking around in a religious sense. You've got a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but you're still dark. You're still ugly. You're still a cloud without water. And yes, I said you're ugly. But the moment that you realize 
He did not just die. Just did not die to take your sins away, but to give you life. The moment that you realize that that life that he's come to give you is only going to be when you take that step out of the tomb. Some of us are so wrapped up into this tomb, we can't move. Come on, today is a day to understand we serve a risen king. A risen king. And that's for you. Don't let the devil try to tell you that you, you, you're, you're stuck. You're not. You're not stuck. As long as the king is on the throne, which will be forever. As long as he's, he's up there making intercession for you, which will be forever. As long as the blood is just as powerful, which will always be. As long as his body was still ripped to shreds for you and me, you're never stuck. You're never stuck. Stop living dead. Stop relying on a man. Stop relying on a woman. You're never dead. Rely on the man. His name is Jesus. This is what it's about. Now you can think all you want, but church, I need you to get this. Some of us are going through emotions that look like God, but we're denying the power, the power of the resurrection. For we must know the fellowship of the sufferings to know the joy, to know the power which in that resurrection that he told us in Philippians. Guys, this is time for us. It's our time. Jesus went back up to sit at the right hand of the Father, to sit down because he made every sacrifice that's needed. And you want to know what he sat down for? You want to know? You want to know why he went back up there? Because it's time for you to shine. It's time for you to rise out of that grave. It's time for you to stand up and say, no, 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 no. You won't hold me back no more. Because I am made holy through him. Hebrews chapter 8 goes through this new covenant for us. And as he goes through this new covenant, I love how he puts it. Because he said, if this old covenant was any good or found faultless, there would not be a need for a new covenant. <laughs> Some of us are still walking in an old covenant. It's time to step up in the new, don't you think? It's time to step up to know that he's going to put his spirit within us and he's going to change things. Isn't it? He's ready. Somebody say he's ready. Are you ready? Are you? Look to somebody right beside you right now. And tell them and say, guess what? Today is my resurrection day. I am so glad you're here. Because you need to feel some of this. You need to get some of this. I'm going to make you look good. I'm going to make you look real good. Uh huh. How many of you believe that? Seriously, how many of you believe that? Yeah. Let me go through this with you. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 4. There again, I'm going to read you the amplified version of this. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. Man, I love that. For the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of the new being. Say, that's, that, that's for me? No, you better say that's for me. Do you really believe it? Are you sure? Are you positive? Some of you are going to get this. I think somewhere down the road, you really will. Has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that is overcome sin and remove its penalty, its power. Say this. Its power has been removed by Jesus. Oh. Being weakened by the flesh, man's nature without the Holy Spirit, God did. He sent his own son in the likeness of sinful man as an offering of sin. And have he condemned sin in the flesh, subdued it, and overcame it in the person of his own son. So that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not live our lives in the ways of the flesh, guided by the worldliness or our sinful nature, but live our lives in ways of the Spirit, guided by His power. Oh, it's good. He says, today I've released you from this. Today I'm releasing you into life. 
life everlasting. So I'm going to come here for a minute. I want to show you something in, in 2 Corinthians. Just go there with me. Come on, come on. Everybody, this is Dominic. Hi, everybody. Good job. 2 Corinthians 5.21. You there? Oh, I want you to get this. Somebody say, I got to get this. No, no, no. Say, I got to get this. How many of you keep taking back what you get put on the altar? Oh, we don't want to raise our hands for that because we're too good, right? Me every day. Lord, I'm not going to do that anymore. Lord, I am not going to be like that no more. I am done with it. And as soon as you say that, you pick it up. It's like right in the back. You ever see those zingers? As fast as you say something, they come back to hit you. Right? Like a boomerang. It's like that. Lord, I'm not going to do this no more. And I turn around that boomerang. She just pow. Hits me right in the back of the head, right? Probably why I ain't got much hair. Anyway. So this is part of this. I really want you to get this because this is resurrection life. Do you realize that you die with him? Do you? Watch this. Verse 21. And he made him who knew no sin to be, to, to be, to, to, did he say put sin on? To what? This is my coat, right? Somebody say, yeah, Pastor. I didn't rent it. I didn't. I've had it for a while. I know some of you don't see me in it, but, but honestly, much. But, but, but I do have it. So this is my coat. This is my sin. Some of us do this while we're still, we died to ourselves. we're buried, and now we need resurrected. So what we do is it's, we're dying. Here it is, Lord. I'm giving you my sin. Put it on. So we're buried. I know it's probably going to be like 15 sizes too big for you around that one. You can blame her for that one. So this is what we do. We die, we bury, we say, here, here's our sin. You take it. You take it. But until we become resurrected, this is what we do. Well, I need it back. I'm cold. I'm cold. So Jesus is still in the tomb with you. He's still standing there, and he's still waiting. And he says, I bought this sin. I became that coat. That belongs to me. But we keep taking it. We keep taking it. So we give it back to him. And just as he starts to put it on, and we're starting to see some victory, we end up, no, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I, but you don't understand. That hurt really fits me. That coat fits me. It fits me good. When I was rejected, that made me feel good. When I wanted to walk home and, 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 and really just have fun with my family, I got home, my dad was drunk and beat me. That fits me. It fits me. So we're stuck in this tomb, and we can't be let go. And it's until we take this, and we get it, and it's completely ours, because we have to own it, right? And we understand that God said this. I became that for you. You don't own it. So then what we do is we take it off and we give it to God. And now he gets to wear it. He gets to go with wherever he wants to. Now, just imagine it's fitting perfect, though, even though I know he's, he's got to become pregnant in order for it to fit. But that's okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Go get me, mom. <laughs> Until he takes it, because it's going to fit him more perfect than it does you. Because he took that to the death. And he took that to hell. And then he said, this is mine. And then when he walks away with it, and we walk out of the tomb, we now have life. Because, see, it's not mine no more. If I give him this coat, and I want to use it in this physical sense. If I give him my coat, which I'm not, because it doesn't fit you. But if I give him my coat, I'll have to go get another one. I did, Kim said, you, but Kim said, but you look so good. I said, I always do. And she went, we got to get that delivered. Anyway, so no, I'm joking, I'm joking. But until I take this ownership and pass it, lock, stock, and barrel, title, deed, I will always struggle. I will never be released into resurrection life. Jesus did that for you. 
What is it that holds you back? See, resurrection life and resurrection Sunday has no power if it's not owned by him who claims it. Him who claims it is Jesus. Let's look at this in Hebrews chapter 2. I know, but it's not up there. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Erica. I'm going to keep this for a little bit longer. Oh, trust me, just a little bit longer. take just a second and we're just going to worship the Lord for a second. So right where you're at, you don't have to stand unless you want to, but I just want you to, just to worship the Lord for a minute. This is Easter. You came here. It's your fault. I keep hearing the Spirit of the Lord saying that he's breaking names off of you. Left without reason to move on then you reached down and brought me up from the valley of dry bones you are the God that saves you are the one who rescues me you rescue me. You are the God that saves, and you call me from the grave. You rescue me. Ransom out of the wreckage, pull from the ash. How many of you right now feel like you need rescue? All I'm going to ask you to do is stand right in your place as we're singing this. Just you that feel like you need rescue. There's something in your life you need to see broken today. That you need to walk out in resurrection power. That's what I want to see you do today. I want you to stand right in your place as a prophetic act saying, Lord, today I am going to be rescued. Today I'm walking out of here free. Ransom out of the wreckage pulled from the ashes of sin's hole hope is flowing through these veins life born from grace and grace Lord you are the God that saves you are the one who rescues me you rescue me oh you are the God that saves and you call me from the grave you rescue me you are the God that saves you are the one who rescues me you rescue And you call me from the grave You rescue me left without reason to move on then you reached down and brought me up from the valley of dry bones you are the God that saves you are the one who rescues me God that saves, and you call me from the 
Bring 
are the goddesses and you called me from the grave you rescue me yes God you rescue me oh from the grave you rescue me oh from hell itself you rescue me oh from the devil god you rescue me oh from my sin oh god you rescued me you rescue me yeah chapter 2 I want to read verses 14 and 15 it says therefore since the children share in the flesh and blood he himself likewise also partook of the same that through death he might render powerless him who had the power over death that is the devil and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives do you know who they're talking about here? It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about him coming and him taking all the power that the enemy had. All of it. Absolutely every part of this. So when we look at the DBR, the first thing that, that we find in the death is that he takes off and he became sin. He broke the power of sin in our life. The burial, which means he now takes the power away from the devil. So the devil cannot rise. Somebody say this with me. He cannot rise. For I'm above. I am above. Did you know scripture says we're seated up there with him? Do you know the devil's not allowed up there with him? Do you realize that? Yes, you're going to go through things, church, but you've got to get this mindset. You are resurrected already in him. You are already sealed with him. When you become born again, the spirit of God is with inside you. Your spirit is sealed by the blood. It is sealed by the Holy Ghost. And the devil can't touch it. He can't come close to it. And it's time that we get everything else to line up. It's time that we grasp this. And it's time that we walk out in power of who he's made us. It's powerful to know the things that God has given us and how he wants to actually make them even better within us. That's what he does. Then we find this is in the burial. He destroyed the works of the devil. All sin. Somebody say all sin. All guilt. All shame. That's got to go. It's just got to go. First John chapter 3 verse 8. The one who practices sin, separating himself from God and offering him by the acts of disobedience, indifference or rebellion, is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral values from him, not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. The Son of God has appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Colossians 2.15 says that he absolutely gets rid of, disarms all powers, principalities. He makes a public spectacle out of them because he's freed you. You have now got this. Here's the last part. We start to see that he's resurrected us to life. Oh, this is good. The new birth. John chapter 10, verse 10 and 11 says this, the Amplified. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and enjoy life and have it abundance to the full till it overflows. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. John chapter 1 verse 12 says to all them who believe on him, he has given rights to become sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters. Somebody say, I am a son. I am a daughter of God. I am slaved only by him. I am free for all my ways. I'll never be held back. I'm done with that dead junk. I am free. I am made new. I am a new creature. All that old is passed away. And it's in the grave. No, 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 no. It's in the grave. You almost there. Do it again. It's in the grave. That life that he talks about there is called Zoe life. That Zoe life means God nature. It means it's God inspired. It's God fruitful. You don't have to suffer with the things that hold you back. 
Now, I'm not telling you just because I'm trying to tell you as a pastor. I'm telling you, I want you walking out of here completely different. And, you know, whether you come back or you go to another church, which would be really, really nice to see you guys back here. Really would. Really would. I just want to throw that out there. Even you that don't believe in making fun of me the whole time, that's okay. I can look past that. But it would really be nice to see you in the house of the Lord somewhere. Because what you end up doing, honestly, is you keep yourself so wrapped up as Hebrews, that book we just talked about. I don't need church. I don't need to be around. I am good. I don't need this. I'm telling you, you're allowing those things to hold you back. That mindset that you don't need. Oh, I'm rejected. I don't feel this. I don't feel, I can't get connected. Get yourself connected. Does a plug from an extension cord plug itself into a wall? Does a, does a, a tool turn around and plug itself into an outlet? Does a power plant just automatically come about? It takes people, it takes things, intentions to do it, right? Guys, this is time. Do not forsake the assembling of others. It seems common practice to man. If you truthfully believe that you were born again, and this is what I find. I don't find any of these, any of these, because there's three different ways to look at the resurrection. We find them all through this. We find one with Mary who is in disbelief. We find the other with John that was excited because it came true. And then we find Peter that went, well, I just don't know what to believe. Today, though, after they started to see him and they saw him, they got together and they said, whoa, I can't, I, let's get together. So they all got together. Let's all be happy. Come on, get They all came together to celebrate it, to celebrate what God has done. What's your story? What's your cross? Get out of that tomb. Tell somebody about it. Get excited. Watch what he's going to do. He did not give you life to set in the tomb. He didn't give you life to set on your duff. He gave you an anointing. He gave you a calling. You've picked up that cross. Here's what I want you to get. Some of you are going through this hellish cross. This excruciating pain. It's torment. You don't know what to do. Things are coming against you. You don't know. There doesn't seem like a door being opened. Everything you've done is tried and you're about ready to give up. I got news for you. Jesus wasn't on the cross long. He wasn't. He didn't stay in the tomb either. When you crucify your flesh and you get yourself in that tomb, you're stuck in the death and burial. You picked up that cross. Get in that tomb. Get yourself out to walk in life. Because he came out. He came out. We are resurrected with him. Jesus isn't on a cross no more. He's not in a, in a tomb. He's resurrected. Dude, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm pumped up. Can you tell? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I just, yeah, let's go there. A couple shots of Holy Ghost Red Bull. Man. Are you getting, I wish, I just wish, I pray to God you could get some of this. I do. And I'm not some nut. I'm not. Some of you think so. I'm not. I am just so consumed by God because I'm not in a tomb. I am not in a tomb. The world might count me out, but God counted me in because I'm not of this world. Neither are you. You're not. You're not. Don't let that sin, don't let that addiction, don't let that name that you were called, don't let that molestation, that rape, that abortion, don't let that define you. You're defined by something greater. His history is your story, but you've got to stand up and walk in it. We are children of life. Children of life. Yeah. Man, I wish you'd get to some of you like. I don't know what to do. He's going to throw something, ain't he? I bet he's going to run across those chairs. No, I'm not. I used to, but no, I'm not. I need you to get this. You need to get this. I declare over top of you. But today is your resurrection day. I declare over top of you. Today is the day that you shine. I declare over top of you that you are free and not wrapped back up into bondage again. I declare over top of you today that you are more than a Lazarus generation. You're a Jesus generation. I declare over top of you today that you are a kingdom of priests unto our God. I declare over top of you today that you are no longer slaves. You have been set free 
that you are a tabernacle. You are a tent. You are a sanctuary of the living God. I declare over top of you today that you are walking in the death, burial, and the resurrection of the King. I declare over top of you today all the glories of the kingdom shall come to you and come through you to change the world around you. I declare you are free. 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 I declare you are free. 